I now want to talk about exposure mode. Most digital SLRs share the same four exposure modes. These are program mode, aperture priority, also known as aperture value, shutter priority, also known as time value, and manual mode. Program mode is the easiest one to use because the camera will give you both the aperture and the shutter speed based on the conditions at the time. With program mode, you can also override some of the camera settings. That makes program mode, in my opinion, more usable than fully automatic mode. In fully automatic mode, if your camera has it, the disadvantage is that you cannot override the automatic settings. Program mode is very good if you're using flash and you don't understand exactly how your flash works. So if you're new to photography and you want to spend some time thinking about composition, I would suggest that you use program mode. Aperture priority mode is my personal favourite and this is the mode that I use the most. In aperture priority mode, the photographer chooses the aperture that he or she wants, usually based on the amount of depth of field that you want in the photograph. One big advantage of aperture priority mode is that your camera has a range of usually 18 different shutter speeds. So by choosing an aperture, you give the camera a significant amount of choice to give you the correct exposure based on the aperture that you've chosen. Also in aperture priority mode, it's excellent for wildlife photography in low light conditions. This is because you can choose the widest aperture, which if you remember is the lowest F number, and then you can point your camera at the wildlife and you will automatically get the fastest shutter speed on those conditions by having the widest aperture chosen. So that's the mode I use a lot for wildlife photography, especially in low light. In shutter priority mode, this is very useful for using flash, particularly when using flash outdoors on a sunny day. In those conditions, it's very difficult to get the right exposure in aperture priority mode. So if you're using flash outdoors on a sunny day, I would strongly recommend using shutter priority mode and choosing a fast shutter speed such as 1 250th of a second. This is the sync speed of most cameras. In manual mode, you get the most creative freedom. It's particularly good when using flash, especially studio flash, and trying to create creative results. However, the price of this creative freedom is the fact that you can make the biggest mistakes and get really bad exposures. So it's very important to learn how to use manual mode as you'll get to learn how to use the basic parts of your camera, but there's nothing wrong with using a semi-automatic mode such as aperture priority or shutter priority. Now let's have a look at a light meter. Most cameras have three different types of light meter. Some even have four. The most common types of light meter are a pattern meter, sometimes known as a matrix meter or an evaluative meter. Next, we have a center weighted average meter. And finally, we have a spot or partial meter. The pattern meter sometimes known as a matrix meter or evaluative meter or an ESP meter is the one I would strongly recommend. It's the default in most cameras and it is an incredibly accurate light meter. I don't want to go into all the details as to how it works but basically it measures light in many different parts of your viewfinder and compares those light measurements with a database and giving you a very accurate measurement of light. That's the one I use about 90% of the time. The idea of a light meter is to expose for 18% grey. This is an 18% grey card. If your scene is very white or very dark, then the camera will try and expose it so that it, it appears to be grey. This can end up with a very dark or very light photograph. We will use a histogram to overcome this problem, which we will look at later on. And I want to talk about ISO. The ISO essentially refers to how sensitive the camera is to light. The higher the ISO number, the more sensitive the camera is to light and the faster the shutter speed. 
The disadvantage though of increasing the sensitivity and the ISO is that the more sensitive the camera is to light, the more noisy the photographs get. In these two examples, I'll show you the difference between a low ISO and a high ISO. In our first example, the photograph was taken at 100 ISO and you can see it is very clean and there's no noise. In our second example, I've taken the photograph at a much higher ISO and there's a significant amount of noise, which you can see with the kind of grainy look in the picture. So if you really want to have a high shutter speed, and then increase the ISO. But to get a fast shutter speed, I would recommend doing the following first. First of all, switch your camera to aperture priority mode. That's A or AV on your camera. Then choose the widest aperture of your lens. That is the lowest F number possible. Now look through the, the viewfinder and compose your photograph. Whilst you're doing that, increase the ISO of the camera until you get the shutter speed that you want to prevent a blurry picture. Let's now have a look at histograms. Histograms are one of the great tools of digital photography that we didn't have with film. A histogram is essentially a graph of the exposure. And from the histogram, we can determine if the exposure is good or bad. On the left hand side of the histogram, we have black. On the right hand side is white. And between the left and right sides, we have different tones with dark tones on the left hand side becoming increasingly brighter until we have the bright tones in white on the right hand side. If you look at this histogram, there are several spikes or high areas. This simply means that there are certain tones where we have a lot of pixels. So the height of the histogram is simply showing that we have a lot or not very many pixels of a certain value. In this example, on the left hand side, there is no spike at all, so there are no pixels that are black. On the right hand side, again, there are no pixels that are white. And we have several different spikes here, here and here, simply showing that we have a lot of pixels in this photograph of these particular values. If you need to make the photograph brighter, then you can use positive exposure compensation. This allows more light into the camera and it will move the histogram to the right. So positive exposure compensation gives us more light and a brighter photograph. If you use negative exposure compensation, then you're allowing less light into the camera and you end up with a darker photograph. And that gives you a histogram further to the left. Let's have a look at a series of photographs now. The first photograph shows this scene correctly exposed. As we increase the exposure by one stop and now two stops, you can see the histogram is moving to the right and the photograph is getting brighter. Let's make the photograph darker. This is now an exposure of minus one stop. The histogram has moved to the left and we have a darker photograph. And in the next exposure of minus two stops, we have a much darker photograph and again, the histogram has moved further left. In the histogram, we're trying to avoid having a spike on the extreme right hand side of the graph. A spike on the extreme right hand side means that we have some pixels that are white. White pixels are overexposed and have no detail. If you do have a spike on the right hand side, then you need to use exposure compensation to move the histogram to the left and have a slightly darker picture. So by combining the histogram with exposure compensation, we can avoid the spikes on the right hand side or the left hand side and end up with an exposure that is correct, which leaves us with a histogram in the middle of the graph. So Richard, I like to ski a lot and what seems like a bright day when I look at my display um, with the snow, it looks really gray and dark. Okay, so you've got this great daylight today and a very bright sunny scene and what you're seeing is a, is a grey photograph, is that correct? Exactly. Okay, so the reason for that is a light meter is designed to give you an 18% grey. So even though you're seeing a bright white scene, the camera wants to expose that so that it's this, this grey colour. And we have to basically 
fool the camera into giving us a brighter exposure. So that's when we use exposure compensation. And a good place to start off with there would be to overexpose the scene by one f-stop. So why don't we show you how to do this now okay. in your Canon Rebel. So on the Rebel you've got this AV plus minus button here. So you half press the, the, half press the shutter button, you press this button down, and then we turn the dial until it says plus one on the back. Okay. And then, so why don't you try that shot again, and then we'll see how it looks. Okay.